Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video. Today, I want to discuss how I landed on my two main weapons for the upcoming MMO New World on August 31st. Um, I'm one of those people that struggles a lot with choosing a main class in MMOs. I play a ton of MMOs, but I'm also like that altaholic person that just likes to play every class and every scenario and every role just to experience it all and, and really take it all in. The downside with that uh, play style, obviously, is that you don't get to enjoy end game as well as other people because you're always switching and falling behind and all that. So um, I want to help you, you help you decide on what your main weapons are by talking about how I decided and the things that I learned about how the game works. And hopefully by the end of the video, you're able to decide on what your two main weapons will be for New World. So let's go. So these are the 11 weapons that New World will launch with. Uh, you have a magic category, a ranged weapons category two-handed and one-handed for melee weapons. Uh, as the inventory works, you will have two weapon slots, a primary and a secondary, and then you can switch between them as much as you want. Uh, there's a little bit of a delay. There's an animation that plays when you switch out, um, and you can have three skills equipped on each one, and then when you switch, your hotkeys will switch to the new abilities that are on that weapon, and as you switch back and forth, uh, you'll be able to use these in combat. So obviously you can't hit and then switch super fast, but you can switch fast enough um, in combat to utilize both of them. On top of that, there is a dual talent tree for each weapon, and you have to level this up to level 20 by using the weapon itself, and it's called Mastery. When you get enough Mastery, you level up, you get a new point to spend in your tree, and you can distribute these points, and eventually, if you get to the bottom of the tree, you unlock some very powerful uh, bonuses and effects that make you very strong. So you're highly incentivized for picking two weapons and sticking with them until they're maxed, um, especially in a game that's very grindy like this, where everyone's going to be, you know, getting their hot pockets out and trying to level 24 hours a day and get as far ahead as they can, right? So you're going to want to pick two weapons that you want are your mainstay, depending on what you want to do in the game. Now, you will be able to pick three, wep uh, three abilities from this. Of these six abilities, you see them as the square icon, um, and it'll fill these three ability slots for when you have the weapon out. Um, you can pick and choose between the six and combo them together. And you can also, if you want to, learn extras and swap them in and out. Um, and you'll have passives along the way that make the ability stronger and affect them. And then you get passive effects that can make you stronger with using that weapon overall. Now, which two weapons you choose is based on a few different categories. The first is what kind of content you want to be doing. There is PvE in the game. There, is, there are dungeons and there are open world, world events and things like that you can interact with and do PvE on. So if you're someone who is very PvE focused, there should be enough there for you to play with. And if that's the case, you want to think about what role you want to be part of. Um, this is an open class type system in an MMO. So it's not as hard locked as we need a specifically a tank, um, three damage dealers and a healer. But they've adjusted the game over the last year to be closer to that. So you actually do want someone that can take threat and aggro. Uh, hold down the boss. Um, there's a lot of kiting that goes on in the PvE encounters and the dungeons that you run into. Um, so it's good to have a tank. So if you're a tank through and through, the best seems to be the sword and shield. It is the only weapon in the game that you can use with a shield in your offhand, which gives you tons of defensive opportunities, a lot of passives for armor. Um, you can shield bash and stun and CC. Um, and you actually get um, lots of threat from blocking, I believe. So this is a great choice as your primary weapon for tanking. The next thing I'll suggest is that you run with one melee weapon or magic weapon and then one ranged weapon. The reason being is there are so many different encounters in this game of different types that if you're double melee only, um, you can get caught a lot where someone's just out of reach or a mob runs away from you and you can't chase it and you can't shoot it. Um, and it, it, it actually, I think in many cases, unless you're intentionally going in double melee, it's very good to have a primary weapon that you love playing with, a melee weapon, and then you have an offhand like a bow or a musket or an ice gauntlet or a life staff that allows you to shoot projectiles, take down mobs, take down players. And especially when you get into the really big 50 versus 50 PVP encounters, if you're melee only, there's going to be certain times where you just can't engage because the mobs are so large that if you can't hit them from range, as soon as you go in, you're going to die. So I would recommend if you're just a casual player or you want, you know, the very uh, like median experience in New World, Pick a melee weapon that you really, really like, you know, one of these six, or decide on magic, and then get an offhand that's a ranged weapon, like the bow, the musket, or the ice gauntlet. You'll see tons of people run with things like, you know, they're a spear main with a bow in their offhand, or they're a great axe main with a musket in their offhand. 
And that way that they, they can, you know, shoot from range and then switch to melee and back and forth. It makes the game, it's the, the most, um, I think the most uh, simple and enjoyable way to play the game. But it doesn't mean you can't run double melee. I will be running double melee. My main will be rapier main with a spear offhand. Um, but I'm also very weird. I like weird things and weird builds. So I'm pretty excited about running these two together. So pick, uh, if you're going for the basic, go for a melee weapon and a ranged weapon in the offhand um, and put that together. So you're gonna be able to run through all the skills online, on websites, things like that. I'm not gonna go through all the skills here um, just because uh, I haven't I haven't really extensively played all the weapons. I've touched and used them all, but I haven't played them all um, very long. So you'll have to kind of figure that out for yourself. Um, but let's talk about what the restrictions are and the things you're gonna wanna think about when you're putting together your two weapon combo. The biggest of this, um, aside from aesthetic and, and experience with the weapon itself, is your attribute distribution. This is actually crucial for choosing what your weapon combo is gonna be because it scales your weapon damage into late game, um, but it also affects the passives that you get and how it affects your play style. So you'll see on the attributes page, we have strength, dexterity, intelligence, focus, and constitution. These all provide different benefits. And then above these, you'll see the whip, the weapon icons showing above specific stats. So the way that works is there are weapons that have a primary stat only, things like the Warhammer or the Great Axe, they scale with strength, which means the more points you put into strength, the harder these will hit and the better these will scale into late game. So obviously if you're going for a great axe or a warhammer main weapon and you want to use that most of the time and you just want to have like a bow in the offhand or a musket in the offhand just to poke at people that are too far away pump that strength get that strength up and that will scale really nicely um, this will help you determine what stats and what weapons you want to pick on top of that there are thresholds uh, for every 50 points you put into a stat you get benefits that are themed to that stat more or less so in the case of strength, after 50 points in strength, your light weapon attacks get 5% damage. Then at 100, you get 10% damage on heavy attacks. Uh, then you start scaling up, you get stamina damage for melee weapons and light attacks. And it just keeps getting more and more melee uh, focused. Stamina regen is faster while you're swinging a melee weapon, which is a crazy good perk. And then the last one is light and heavy attacks with melee weapon gain grit, which is kind of complicated to explain, but let's just pretend that grit um, is a modifier that allows you to avoid being staggered when you're out of stamina. Um, it's more complicated than that, but let's just pretend that that's what it is for now. So you're going to have these uh, stat break points for the stats you have. You'll see at the bottom how many points you get. Um, you'll get about 190 points to distribute on your own by leveling, and then you'll be able to get more stats from gear. I think it's probably safe to say that you're going to get about 500 points to distribute across these uh, five categories on your own and the fully capped amount is 300. So obviously if you only get 500, you can only cap out one stat all the way to the very end. So it's important to know what your main stat is gonna be. Um, is it intelligence, is it dexterity? If you're running a life staff, maybe you wanna run focus because you wanna be a healer, things like that. Now, some of the weapons have a dual stat scaling. So the spear, the musket, the rapier, the sword and shield and the hatchet are all hybridized weapons, which means they have two different stats they scale off of. The stat you see listed first is the primary stat. So for the hatchet specifically, it scales with strength and dexterity, but most of that comes from strength. So if you're a melee focused build with strength, hatchet's gonna scale off of that. But for every point you put in dexterity, you'll get a little bit more scaling on the hatchet. Um, so it's important to know what that difference is. For the spear, the musket, and the rapier, these are dexterity based, so they will be dexterity primary, and then they'll, um, the rapier and the musket are intelligence, and the spear is strength, and then the sword and shield gets strength primary and dexterity secondary. So you can see already why it's important to figure out what your stat distribution is, what weapons you want, and then figure out what the talent trees are gonna be and how you put all, all together into a build. So that's what you're looking at here. So things, you can run like a musket, with a, a rapier, which are both dexterity main, run to dexterity and maybe get a little bit of intelligence, and it scales off of that. So now that we know how all that works, let's go through some very basic build combinations. And I'll assume that for almost all of these, you're gonna wanna put together a uh, primary weapon and a secondary um, with ranged and melee considered in mind. So let's go through some options, um, things you might like. Um, I still recommend if you're gonna be playing a game for hundreds and hundreds of hours, you pick the thing you enjoy. Right, so find something that you like the aesthetic of. Maybe you've played it in beta if you got into the beta and you, or you on launch day, you don't care about rushing, play around with the weapons, pick the one you like and then lock it down. Like this is the one I wanna use the most because I really enjoy it. And then add a secondary to it and you're good to go. 
that's the best way to do it. Um, always, I will always suggest people go for their own happiness, but let's go through some combinations that can be really cool. If you're a PvE main, I would recommend the Sword and Shield with the Life Staff. The Life Staff is going to be the only weapon that can heal party members in PvE content like dungeons. So if you have the Life Staff as a secondary or even as a primary, you're able to do some really cool things with it. Uh, heal people, buff people, protect people, channel heals into people, things like that. And then on the tanking side, as far as PvE Master, Sword and Shield is probably going to be the best for that. So if you have Sword and Shield and Life Staff, that means you have ranged attacks from the Life Staff, because all of these shoot ranged attacks and projectiles, the magic weapons. So you'll have the ranged attacks for things that are far away. You'll have buffs and defenses from the Life Staff. The Sword and Shield will be up close. If anything gets close to you, you can mess with it. It also has tons of buffs that allow you to stay tanky. Um, you can uh, knock people down their CC. So if you're going for all I care about is PvE, or I just want a very balanced build that has all the things in it that I need, and I don't really have any glaring weaknesses, Sword and Shield plus Life Staff is going to do you wonders. Another popular build that you'll probably see if you watch any of the uh, closed beta gameplay is Spear Primary with a Musket Offhand. The reason this works so well is the Spear, um, it's one of the weapons I'm maining, which is super fun, but it has a lot of CC involved in it, like the thrust kick, um, incredible knockdown. You can do the sweep attack, which knocks down people as well and deals good damage. It's got good reach. So unlike things like the sword and shield or the rapier, it can really hit from good range and it's easy to land melee attacks with a spear. Um, and on top of that, it just has some really cool passives and abilities on as well. And then you run with something like the musket. The bow you usually will have out for longer periods of time. The musket um, hits a little bit higher than the bow, but does but fires slower and is usually something you can't really use while you're running around and being highly mobile. So the spear is your versatile weapon that gives you good reach, good mobility, a lot of CC. And then when something gets far away, you can pop them in the head with the musket and switch back and forth. You'll see a lot of the PVPers and grinders running spear musket. Um, it's a tried and true combo. It works really well based on how the game is built right now. Now, if you're a PVPer, Things to consider, because I'm a PvP main, I love PvPing. It's going to be hard to ignore uh, specific weapons, namely the Ice Gauntlet and the Hatchet. Main reason, the Ice Gauntlet has super fast projectiles. It's very good for poke damage, very reliable. The base weapon itself, you can hit and poke people very easily. And then you have lots of abilities that are perfect for PvP. You have Ice Storm, where you can slow air enemies in an area. Um, you can bring down um, Ice Shower, which slows an area in front of you as well. And so the slowing, and the, you can kind of poke, and when they get close, you can slow them down and fight on top of them and switch back to your melee weapon. Ice Gauntlet is a great offhand, much like the bow, that you can pair with almost any melee weapon and get a lot of value out of it. The hatchet is high damage, and it does have some ranged weapon um, benefits to it. You can throw it for extra damage, and you can also do some really cool debuffs and bleeds and things like that. Um, which is really cool and actually there is a build where uh i've seen some people running hatchet and great axe it's double melee but you do have the charge um with the uh with this uh, this charge goes for 10 meters and you drag the axe behind you so you have some decent mobility you have a vortex which is kind of like a soft cc it pulls people in and then the hatchet gives you a uh, really good scaling um an extra value on your uh, weapon abilities and then also you have the range attacks with it as well but for PvP, I recommend something like Warhammer and Ice Gauntlet, Fire Staff and Ice Gauntlet if you want to get into the Fire Staff. The only downside of the Fire Staff is that it's a little slower and sometimes can be hard to use, but when you learn how to master it, it's super rewarding. And then you can run um, Hatchet with like a Spear. You can run Hatchet with a Bow or a Musket. You can run Spear with a Hatchet as well, a double melee build, because these you can throw the Spear and you can throw the Hatchet too, which gives you ranged options. Or if you just like to play super fast, you can run something like the uh, Rapier with the Bow, because they're both dexterity scaling weapons. Uh, the Bow is primarily dexterity, and then the Rapier is dexterity and intelligence, but if you scale dexterity out, you'll get some cool dodge roll effects in here, and you can play really fast and mobile with these two together. So that's my big recommendation. Pick a weapon that you really like, and then add a secondary. If you don't have range, make sure you have ranged. And then think about your stat distribution as well. Um, if you uh, have a primary stat, you're going to want to get one of these to 300. And then think about which weapons scale off of that. So if you want to get strength to 300, think about maining one of these weapons here listed here. Um, mostly these four because the spear is actually dexterity main. 
Um, and then dexterity, if you want to do range, it works great with the bow and the musket. And then you can put in, you know, like a spear musket is really good. Uh, rapier musket is pretty good. Uh, hatchet and and um, hatchet and spear is really good. Things like that. So that's what I've learned about how the game works, how the stat distribution works, how the weapons are. Um, I recommend having a melee and a range. I recommend playing what you really like um, and try to pair that together with the stats that you have and then get to grinding because this game is a ton of fun. It's very grindy. You're going to want to pick two and stick with them. So I hope this video was useful for you. Um, this isn't like an official guide or anything, just kind of my thoughts off the top of my head of what I've been working on and what I've been mulling over on what weapons to use. So if, it, if you enjoyed yourself today, leave a like down below. If not, that's cool too. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see you in the next one.